So this week's episode of Fruits Basket slows things down after last week's emotionally heart-throbbing episode. We can't have two episodes like that back-to-back, so let's slow it down. But it didn't stop this from actually telling a pretty interesting story, especially between Toru as well as her friends, while also alluding to some pretty dark secrets within the Soma family, which has me very excited for the future, especially because we get a phone call to meet up with someone who Yuki specifically says don't meet up alone with, otherwise you'll probably lose your memories. Things are going to get very, very interesting very quickly. After last week's episode, I mean, these characters really kind of came full circle, and obviously we still have so much more to do with them and explore with their relationship, but you really feel like this was the first time that they kind of understood one another at a deep enough level that you could really call them a close group of friends. And with this week's episode, we focus on Taru's other set of friends. Friend, someone who's been with her for a very long time and we learned that essentially Toru was the one who saved them in the past and obviously we'll learn more down the line see exactly what happened but of course you have two people who are very concerned because they know Toru they recognize how she behaves how she talks with people and interacts and of course they're going to pick up on the fact that she's talking with two of the most popular boys in school a lot more and for obvious reasons they're going to be a little concerned i mean one of them for whatever reason has this weird wave kind of magic spell that she can kind of pick up on and kind of latch onto people's auras which is both humorous but also a little frightening because it can be a bad thing depending on what she picks up on but you're seeing that essentially like even back when her mother died like they were there for her so obviously we're starting to understand their friendship but also see that they're more than just the tough girl and the Esper-like girl who are just kind of close with Toru, no, they really are a very close group of friends, and they learn that, of course, Toru is living with the Somas. And for obvious reasons, if you really are good friends with people, you're going to want to check out your new friend's living arrangements and make sure nothing bad is happening, especially if she's going to be living in a house with all boys. And what I like about this dynamic is essentially you have not really focusing too much on Toru, but rather her friends and seeing that they're very worried because they feel as if for all that she's done for them, saving them time and time again and really giving them what seems to be a purpose, it's interesting how just heartbroken they kind of seem because it feels as if Toru can't latch onto them for her emotional needs where they were able to do that with her. But I like how with like Yuki as well as Kyo, they're recognizing, especially after last week, Toru isn't the type of person in the way they say it to ask for the moon. She's someone who really isn't good at asking for help or asking for things that she wants. And it wasn't until last week till she actually did that. And this seems to be a very important thing because the head of the Soma family clearly has admitted that they want the moon. I don't know if this head of the family is male or female, so it will be interesting to see where they're going with that. But essentially, it seems like Toru is like the perfect type of person. I mean, the family is really loving her. She doesn't ask for the moon. She's not greedy. And the head of the family is clearly a horrible person as pretty much everyone is indicating. So it's interesting how like as you're having this friendship dynamic, you're also showcasing like what's going on with this family. You're seeing Shigure like meet up with the head of the family being like, you're a horrible person, Toru isn't. She's not going to fail this. You're probably hoping that it's going to fail, but jokes on you, shit's not going to go wrong. There's all this like serious family dramatic stuff going on in the middle of pretty much a very simple scene where we're actually learning a lot about Toru's friends who we really haven't seen too much of, just very cute interactions as well as pretty fun interactions. And now we're seeing that there's actually a lot of emotional distraught between them because they feel as if they're not good enough to be friends with Toru. But of course, by the time the episode wraps up, they completely recognize that they were foolish because Toru is the type of person who would never ask for help, but she really does love her friends and family, especially with who she has. There's a moment where she recognizes that, or she kind of mentions that she's like the luckiest girl in the world. She had the perfect mother. She gets to live with these amazing friends, and she also has her other two close friends and how much she loves him. It's such a really sweet episode while setting up some more dark and messed up things within the family and alluding that Toru probably would be a better head of the house than the current one, which I don't think that's probably a good thing to say because otherwise she's going to get whacked with her memories, probably something to that nature. But it was interesting to see how the friendship dynamic was playing out because you have characters who are picking up on the fact that like Yuki and Kyo are basically a rat and a cat and they're getting freaked out but it's more of just like the way they interact with each other not that she can read into their minds and see that they're going to body swap into an animal things of that nature i like this episode because i really wasn't that interested in her other friends like i liked their personalities when they popped up they were fun but i really wasn't interested in learning too much about them and then when i learned that we're going to be majorly focusing on them in this episode i was like okay let's see where fruits basket wants to go and by the time this episode wrapped up i felt really almost emotionally connected the same way Toru is. And I'm like, wow, they've clearly been around with her for a long time. 
they're not just like jealous or like being like oh she gets to live with these pretty boys but rather they're very much worried that you know she isn't the type of person who will ask for help and they want to make sure that she has a good and safe living arrangement and that's really touching and even in the middle of all that you get a lot of really personal stuff especially with Yuki who is very much a pretty and cute boy that's kind of his persona and boys girls pretty much everyone and their mothers recognizes how adorable he is and I like how it seemingly is something he's very self-conscious about because he says like boys shouldn't be cute that's not how it's supposed to be that's how society dictates things cuteness is for girls and I like how Toru is the type of person who can really let him embrace that because he is a cute character right he's a cute boy and that obviously would do a lot for someone's like kind of self-doubt because you would feel like oh that's not who I'm supposed to be you know I can dress up in this female clothing and people are saying how cute I am but that's not how it should be but you can tell that that's probably what he wants to do but it clearly was something that he's very self-conscious about and to have someone like Toru recognize that you know like back when she was a kid her mother would say you're cute and it was a form of loving endearment it wasn't something to be mockery or anything to that nature and I like how you have these like little moments that really just continue to flourish their relationship because clearly Yuki and Kyo possibly could both fall in love with Toru and obviously it'll be interesting to see where that relationship would go I've had so many people ask me what team I'm on I'm not a part of that stuff I hate shipping characters I think what a story should do and you should follow a story is a character when they fall in love you should focus on if that's what they want if that's what they want then you support that pairing but that's not really the focus of Fruits Basket to me it is more about the relationships being formed and if both of these or one of these or none of these characters eventually fall in love with Toru it would be interesting to see where Toru's heart will lead her because clearly she's not the type of person who would just drag around a bunch of people and make them kind of daunt all over her and that's what I like because in these moments where Typically, I would see, okay, she's saying how cute he is, and this would just be like this romantic undertone. What I really felt with Fruits Basket in this episode was rather than seeing something like that, I felt she was just a really good friend, embracing an aspect that's really awesome about his character, and he was able to come out of a situation where he was feeling rather bad about himself, and rather come out saying, you know what, maybe it is okay for me to be like this, and it's a really touching moment. And then you get all the simpler more cute moments especially with Hattori as well as this foreign kid who is the foreigner was a little bit of a, a wild card for me I wasn't overly fond of the trope but once I saw that he was the rabbit I kind of got way on board because it just kind of matched the kind of bouncy and almost like overly energetic persona which I kind of like the zodiacs really matching their personalities because even when I see a initial personality I'm like okay I'm not overly fond of this kid just kind of like being super bubbly and jumping around but then when I see he's actually a rabbit I'm like okay that actually makes total sense and I'm completely on board with why this person is like this and clearly they're gonna have some demons in their closet too as seen by pretty much every character in this show the voice acting once again really went all in and I like how even though this was one of the more positive episodes of Fruits Basket with not too much gloominess and darkness and despair obviously they were alluding and kind of setting up future events that are gonna be pretty probably emotionally gripping and just screwing over with the viewer however it was very much like you have your school festival you got your characters coming over to visit you at home and then you have your kind of playful and energetic scenes I like how even in the middle of all this you're still getting this very subtle but very emotional voice acting as seen with the Japanese I can't speak for the English I watched this in Japanese but the Japanese actors really got this across as being something that's like they're worried but they're not really overly selling it as I'm so worried that the world's going to end it's a very simple but if you were in a situation like this where your friend is now living in a new home that they didn't tell you about with all these pretty boys of course you're going to be a little concerned and also a little worried that maybe you're not good enough to be their friend and that's how I felt the actors kind of delivered this performance which I really appreciate this was a very sweet episode of Fruits Basket and I'm sure we're going to have plenty of episodes similar to this because not every episode is going to be like last week where it just like stabs you in the heart makes your heart hurt and then completely melts it and mends it back into the perfect package but of course you're going to have plenty of episodes where they do slow down the pace they let these simpler characters the smaller characters who we really haven't thought too much about and let them have their time in the spotlight to flourish and make it feel like this cast as a whole they're not disposable but they're rather like they are connected if you know we have our main character Toru interacting with these two girls they have to be important otherwise what's the point of having them in this show and we're seeing that everyone's going to have their chance to shine and we're still just getting started this is only the first season this will be a full adaptation so of course we're going to see plenty of interesting motivations, character moments, emotional and just cute and adorable wrapped up into one beautiful package. And the more I watch a Fruits Basket, the more I love it. The series is so remarkable because even when I look at a situation, I'm like, I know exactly how they would want to go. Because typically 
I know what to expect with a series such as this, but I'm just constantly surprised by how they can take a scene that I thought would be typical and actually I walk out saying, no, that's in a really emotionally well-written scene that didn't feel cliche in the slightest, even though at a first glance you think I know what to expect, but they always throw a curveball to really make you feel like, wow, this was actually really impressive. This show just keeps getting better and better, and even though I still think last week was the best episode of Fruits Basket, this doesn't feel like a letdown or anything to that nature. It feels like a great episode that just continues on that great fruits basket path the cliffhanger has me dying to see what this head of the family is going to do i don't know what should happen but because we have toru as a character of course she's going to head right on down even though she probably could lose her memories because that's just who she is but hopefully she can sweet talk her way out of this and kind of mend the hearts of people who clearly uh want to screw her around but for everyone who did watch this week's episode of fruits basket for manga fans fans of the original anime or just anime originals like myself let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and if you did enjoy be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't been do around here so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one